So today's next chapter is 13th chapter called as Yoga of Field and Field Knowledge. Field is the area or field is your work area or specialized area, specialized area where you are likely to have your entire career. So Bhagavad Gita asks you to look at the area, specialization where you are working and the knowledge about that particular field. The summary of this chapter could be just written in this one paragraph. The destiny of professional success depends upon individual who manages it. Somewhere in the past I had made a reference that you are born here on this earth for a particular kind of a work to be done. So that, that may be a part of destiny. Uh, if you don't believe on destiny, but then practically whatever you do, you are born for that. You must be able to understand the positive and negative points of the people under this control. Uh, specifically in the areas where we people are entering, that is management era. What do we do for the entire life is manage the people. Even if we talk about technology, automation and robotization or maybe a lot of uh, advancements which are happening in the field of technical uh, era. But then still at the end of the day we keep on managing only the people because people manage the technology and not the technology manages the people. Barring that exceptional example which I had given uh, for you from the movie Robo. Robots. Rajnika no, no, no. Robot. So in that movie uh, is only the imagination which is maybe another thousand years ahead that where a robot can design or generate another robot. But then uh, thousands of years are ahead. So till that time we have to manage only the people around us. So we have to be very careful about managing that. Especially the negative attributes individuals are more under vigilance. So it is said that you must be as a manager irrespective of uh, what specialization you have. It is not only the responsibility of HR people to understand the people, but it is the responsibility of all the managers. The people who are working under them specifically, those who are negative attribute or negative attitude people that you must be able to identify. Because there is a saying in Marathi which I translate in English that even a one bad element in the team or in the group is likely to mark the entire effect of the team. So as a manager or uh, as a position holder you must be able to identify all such elements which are having negative attribute or negative attitude. And we have learned in knowledge in the US subject attitude is one part which once formulated it's very difficult to change unless and until that person decides to do that. You cannot change the attitude of somebody else. If that person decides to change then only it can be possible. But that person won't decide to change because he knows that whatever he is doing, whatever he is following, whatever he is behaving is right according to him. So even if the negative attitude people, negative attribute people, slight difference between attitude and attribute, attribute you can still change by different kind of addition inputs to you. But attitude when once formulated it is, I would I won't say not possible, but I would say 98% it is not possible. There is only 2% chances of changing that person's attitude only if he or she decides to do that. And that can be possible only when first of all that person admits that he is doing something negative. Uh, I can give you many examples but then just try to understand the concept and uh, you will come across many such kind of situations, people and uh, incidences where you will come to know about the attitude of the people. And specifically the negative attributes or the characteristics or competencies of the people. So if you cannot understand the attitude which is much on a psychology side but then uh, at the workplaces whichever tasks, works, duties, performances, responsibilities a person is expected to do, you can very easily understand what whether that person is performing all that list which I made just now. Uh, honestly, whether he is having a negative kind of attribute to performance and uh, that is very well possible in the industries today called as performance oriented industries. So unless and until you perform, you cannot stay with the organization. You are likely to be either uh, left by the organization, removed by the organization or you may not fit in into that particular clog of the organization and you can always be out of that organization if you are not fitting the criteria. So but as a manager, uh, you are supposed to understand the negative attitude of people and you have to have more vigilance on that. Vigilance means watch on those people. And that may be one of the few reasons where we have got uh, cameras at all the places so that at least those people who are having in their body language negative attribute those, those could be at least captured by the camera fortunately or unfortunately cameras are not capturing what you what people are talking 
So those kind of cameras are also available, but then that may not be required at the juncture. But the day will come where we might have to have the cameras where the microphones also fit into that, and then people will stop talking negative about each other, negative about at all different levels, negative about the organization itself. It is always said that if you don't have an ownership with your organization, you really cannot do the dedicated work. And most of the times, it is observed. It's it's been the human tendency when I'm being paid for uh, whatever work I'm doing, I will do only that work. If I'm asked to do any kind of extra work, I won't do it because I I'm not paid for it. And the moment you have this thought in your mind, you don't have the ownership with the organization. And ownership is we have discussed earlier also. This institute belongs to me. This organization belongs to me. This particular uh, corporate or industry where I am working with, this unit belongs to me. Unless and until you have this feeling, you cannot really give a dedicated work. So that dedicated work, the possibility of these individuals not having is more because they basically come from or come with the negative attitude. So it's your duty to understand and have more vigilance on that. Maybe by CCTV cameras. Or maybe identifying and studying more areas of uh, psychological understanding of human beings. So therefore, HR people are uh, expected to be expert in that. But again, HR also has got a separate branch of industrial psychology. Only there it is taught. Unfortunately, that subject is not there in your HR syllabus. MBA HR, MPM students, which is now renamed as MBA HR by university, those people have got industrial psychology subject. So there, where it focuses more on individual people and their contribution at the workplaces and the psychology of the workplace. So that subject probably is expected to give you a know-how of uh, how a manager should behave and understand the people and their behavior and their psychology at least at workplaces, so that you can identify the behavior of the people, so that the weaknesses of these individuals may be worked out and then we do things. And that's what uh, we even talk in management, SWOT, chapter number one. To identify your weaknesses, convert into the strengths. Identify the threats or challenges in the market, convert into the opportunities. So we have to convert that W to S and T or C to O. That is needed by every manager to do. Important concepts in this: What are field and field professional? So let us put it only in the simplistic way of our specialization. So whichever areas you specialize in, those are your professions. This should have knowledge here. Those are your professions and your field of work. So you have to become more and more expert with reference to that. This is what we have done in unit number, chapter number eight also. So there we will discuss a lot of skills development. So whatever new areas are coming up in your uh, specialization area, in your fields, in your field professions. Then you need to improvise or keep on improvising on that, or developing your skills on that. You were born with and learned later. At the time when you were born, were you knowing that I would be doing HR specialization in my life or energy specialization? So nobody is born with a particular uh, thing decided in his life. But if you remember, I had made a reference somewhere of a technique called as DMIT. If you could remember those who were present. So that DMIT can tell within ten days of after the birth of a child that in which field he can excel, and it's it's a science of course. It's not a psychology. It's not a spiritual science. It is not just like your horoscope science. So people will see horoscope and they will tell you any kind of predictions. And if you take your horoscope to ten different people, you will get you will get different uh, predictions. So because it is not still a perfect science, it is not accepted as a perfect science. There is of course a university. Which talks about horoscope science, the Jyotish Vidya Pet is there, but then still they don't claim to be uh, horoscope science or the Jyotish Vidya as a perfect science. So that is not included in any of the syllabus of any of the university. They have got their own university. Fine, those who are interested, they can join. To some extent, those who uh, excel more in that, those who study more of horoscope science, very much in detail, in the sense that those who have got inclination and some kind of uh, There's a particular word, uh, kind of attribute of understanding the horoscopes and all the different twelve uh, positions of the horoscope, etc. So those who study in detail, their prediction might go correct. There are two methods in horoscope. One is the typical method, which all uh, people who watch your horoscope and they will tell Shani Pandya or Rahe, and yet the Sari Sathya Sathya, all those things. So that is one approach of doing it. And there's another approach called as KP system. That is Krishna Murthy system of horoscope, wherein 
it is more minute in detail and I, have, I know few people, I have also studied that for almost 10 years. So we can literally tell you what is going to happen in your life in a particular day or in a particular week. And that science is proven to be almost close to 98% perfect. But still there is a chance of 2%. And it is there in all kind of researches also for that matter. The, more, uh, the, the moment you have got your reliability and validity score of your researches which you do is more than 70% that is 0.7 value, you presume that that research is proved research. So here that way the percentage is still higher, but still nobody can 100% uh, uh, guarantee you that whatever I am telling you is going to happen. I know few people who can guarantee that, but then again because of that 10% we won't be able to believe on it. Point here is that nobody is born with a particular skill or a particular task you have to keep on developing. You might have been born with the traits, qualities, competencies, ability which you might have taken from your earlier generations. So which is true. So if you could see around, you will come across many doctors whose sons and daughters will also become doctors. We have got many lawyers whose sons and daughters will also become lawyers. We have got many architects who are who the next generation will become into the same field where they where their parents, their grandparents belong to. That is again proven by medical science, something what we call the genes or DNAs or uh, the qualities will get transferred to the next generation. That is a proven medical science. Uh, the one example is there right in front of you. I have got all my professional degrees, but then I went to teaching profession because my both parents were teachers. So it proves by that connection that your qualities will get transferred to your next generation and usually even I know the cases where the uh, father is a manager in HR and IR, their parents, uh, their uh, sons and daughters are also in the same way. Father has done a, I know one case very recently, I could recollect that very recently. One person is doctorate in the management, his daughter also has become, uh, did MBHR and she has, has also done PhD in it. So this, this happens because you are born with certain traits which are transferred to you from your previous generations. But still going away, the other thing is also happening, rather it is more happening that the parents have got no connection what you are doing. So typically talking about MBAs, nowadays if you find most of the students who are coming from MBAs are coming from rural background where most of their parents have not taken any kind of education. So how this can happen? Because that is where you are supposed to learn there. So it is up to you what you want to become in your life, it is up to you what specialization, what specification, what competencies you would like to develop in you. And you are not born with any kind of special abilities, unless or except for those uh, technical elements which I have said. Skills and dexterity. Now dexterity is one step ahead of skills. Uh, dexterity is in making or using your entire body more effectively. And I remember I had told you a story of one uh, Charlie Chaplin's movie, Modern Times, where he keeps on doing that activity and he becomes dexterous in doing that activity. So dexterity meaning is your body getting so much used to it that you don't have to probably think that I am doing this activity and I have to be very much concentrated I have to do it. The drivers who are doing the driving for the entire life, they are so much expert in driving. You must have seen most of the time, a rashful driver who overtakes you, most of the times it is a yellow plated car. Why? Because they have developed that dexterity to such an extent, uh, what we say in Marathi Kite Parvashe, cut mark. So they have got a tremendous judgment which probably normal human beings like you and me who are not drivers per se, as a profession, we drive our cars, but as a profession we are not drivers. None of us is going to be unless you decide to become a driver. So those people have got tremendous ability to drive uh, to such an extent that they have developed their dexterity in that direction. I happened to listen to one of the interview of truck drivers. So this typical the truck drivers who have got NP written at the back side and front. NP is what? Yes, National permit. So those trucks are allowed to go from any corner of India to any corner of India. And those trucks will be carrying uh, the material which could be uh, which could not be transported by road directly. There are uh, trucks which will be carrying uh, cars also. So at any given point of time, one truck will be carrying ten cars of sand road or even sedan cars could be transported in that. You might have seen those big trucks with big trolleys. So those drivers, uh, I happen to listen to interviews of such drivers on television. And one driver was telling to the interviewer that during travel. 
know, when the road is, we are so much used to driving and we are so much used to that particular path that very often we sleep while driving for 5 to 10 minutes. Can you believe this? And he said that in our sixth sense or in our inner brain, we could see there is a band of white color near the divider. So our brain is trained that we see that for almost 8-10 km there is a straight, a straight drive which is there on express highway. So they simply put that band in their mind and they just follow that band and they sleep. It is a real experience told by those drivers. 5 to 10 minutes we sleep. And that is the reason why most of the trucks makes, uh, come across with accidents. Because they believe too much on their dexterity. Another meaning of dexterity is multitasking. That probably will come in the next slide. So that time I will explain. Development of skills required willingness and skills development. Collective mind is balanced when we are seen in 12th unit. Basic skills, positive and negative skills, and skills and goals. This is the multitasking. This example I have already given you. Multitasking speaks about you as today's generation. It is very clearly mentioned the meaning of multitasking in this particular shloka. It says, Sarvata Pani Padam, Tat Sarvato Shishiro Mukham. All these are Sanskrit words. Sarvata Shruti Madhavke Sarva Mahavati Tiksha. It means uh, my body has got a full. Actually, this is a verse from 11th unit where it is a Vishuddha Darshan and it is shown that he has got many hands, many legs, many. Of uh, heads, so all these uh, shruti, shruti malak means ears, many ears, uh, many uh, uh, legs, then many eyes. So that is what you people, your generation is doing something called as multitask. Generation earlier, my generation are not so much multitasker. Next generation becomes slightly more multitasker than us, and your generation, generation called as generation Z. I'll be speaking about it in 18 chapter. So you people are more multitasker means you can do two, three things at a time, which our generation people are not doing. Because that's a specific uh, gifted, uh, I can say a specific gift given to you or your generation by God. I'll speak about it later when we talk to that chapter. So you people are expert in multitasking, dexterity, development of your skill. And uh, the first one of the verses says that every body part has some function to play. That also uh, we have seen in 11th chapter. So we have been given with tip to toe, every part of our body has got some or the other function to perform. And it says further, which uh, talks about karma yoga, that whatever work you do, that has to be done with skills. Koshala means with utmost accuracy possible. Then only uh, you are likely to say that karma yoga has been achieved. The moment you start doing your work haphazardly uh, or without giving any kind of perfection in it, you will keep on doing like that and you will never achieve perfection in your life. Smaller, smaller things are there which we don't give much importance. For example, I am drafting a letter. And drafting a letter we have been taught since our school days, isn't it? Patra Lekhan, Marathi medium people like me who used to say like that. So Patra Lekhan is used to write the letter. And initially, uh, earlier pre-primary or not pre-primary, primary school, we used to write the letters to our friend, to our relative, to our mother, to our father, etc. Later on, we started writing to professionals' letter, like putting an order of something, then writing a complaint about, about certain things. So, letter writing is a part which is taught us in schools, right? After that, you might have gone to 11, 12, so there you must have uh, understood how to write more such kind of professional or commercial letters. In graduation time, if you have taken commerce, and I guess there are separate subjects where the purchase order you are supposed to draft, you are supposed to prepare a new voice, you are supposed to prepare the bill. So all those things are taught to you. Point is, letter writing is not a new thing which you learn in business communication in Masters in Business Administration course. You have been taught, you have been learning since your school days. But if I ask you to write a letter and you write it and give it to me on a piece of paper, one A4 size sheet, letter written to me, I can guarantee you that I will be making out at least 20, 20 mistakes in everybody's letter. How that can happen? Because since our childhood days, since our school days, we consider a typical Indian mentality chalta hai. How many of you know, honestly, that the space, when you put a comma or any punctuation for that matter, okay, a comma, hyphen, semicolon, inverted comma, etc. So after that, you have to press or hit space bar, not before that. I can show you 90 people out of 100 doing this mistake. 
was not taught to us these things taught to us in fifth standard we have gone ahead of 10 15 years learning that why it has happened because we have not thought of doing it with accuracy right whereas industries are talking about zero defect manufacturing manufacturing itself is a very complicated affair and when you are doing manufacturing which is likely to go to the entire world your product so you have to be very much accurate and precise in whatever you are doing Kaizen speaks about it the, whatever I said just now is zero defect manufacturing there are techniques which have come up in industries called as zero inventory technique then just in time why all those things are required to bring in as much accuracy as possible and there is a saying in management that quality can never be an accident whereas in Opposite can be possible that if I don't have a quality in my product, I may say that it's too much. If I don't have a quality in my service, I may say uh, I apologize. It must have been done by mistake. But then you cannot say for single product is a lot too much. It cannot happen. So for bringing in quality, you have to have everybody working in that system with kaushal. Kaushal means a skilled work, work without any defects, work without any errors. And where does it start and who is supposed to do that? Not your CEOs, not your general managers. It is the bottom most person who is cleaning the toilets. There was one joke which I just recently uh, got it on WhatsApp. You must have got it because nowadays when WhatsApp started, the circulars used to reach to us from all other different groups maybe after a month or after a week. Nowadays if you get it, uh, get some joke on one group, in another group you will get it in, in another 5 seconds or less than that. So this being circulated, we might have received. Uh, there was one person talking. Uh, there was a complaint about the cleanliness of the toilet in one company, and uh, the CEOs and all the top officials they sat on a discussion that how we can do that. The toilets are not very clearly or very cleanly maintained. So what can be done? So the CEO of a company that could be another good example of how a leader can think differently as compared to the common other people. So in this meeting, the CEO of the company come up with a brilliant solution. He said that you call a carpenter and we'll get that problem sorted out. The carpenter was called and he was told that there are two toilets in uh, our, this particular office and there are two toilets named one is called as executive toilet and another is called as uh, staff toilet. So your job is every week you will simply exchange the boards. Executive toilet will be replaced by this staff toilet and staff toilet will be replaced by executive toilet because staff toilets was the complaint where it was not maintained properly. Executive toilets were excellent. So what has happened here? Why those people were not cleaning the staff toilet properly? Because they thought chanta hai staff ke liye kya far padta hai. Executive people are the people who are going to use and they are the decent makers. So unka toilet saaf hoon hai. This was the simplest thing. This is a real experience of one of the companies and they have done it and all the toilets are good now. If you go to toilet of uh, railway station or horribly uh, bus stands go against that on an aerodrome look at the toilets there you feel so fresh that you feel like staying there those are the ways the things are maintained aerodromes or aeroplanes uh, these um, uh, aerodromes are being given every year the best airport award every year by the international authorities I happen to visit fortunately uh, three aer aer aerodromes where those got the best airport award in that year. It was you know, mere coincidence. But then the way they maintain, the way people are being welcomed, the way people are being treated on the aerodromes, that is something different. And I have got an experience on Mumbai airport. You can ask to anybody who is coming from any country and he lands up on Mumbai airport, ask them the experiences. Nobody will say good about our Indian airports. You, Mumbai airport, Delhi airport, wherever you go, the most crowded airports in India, Delhi, all, all those metro cities, Bangalore, Calcutta, Mumbai. Once I had been coming from Dubai and whenever I come from, from any country, I get a lot of gifts for all my friends, even my first faculty members. So I have got watches to my faculty members, these watches. So those are around some 75 which I have got, including, including all my friends and all. So when I got down in uh, Mumbai airport, the lady was sitting very idly, snoopy kind of thing on the chair. She was literally lying on the chair. And she asked me, Kai and the Rechamadi would smuggle karun. You can just imagine the way of approach of looking at a person. So a custom person was called, 
then I had to identify who I am, why these watches are there, I showed all the bill and then I was left. And then while leaving I told that customer, uh, that custom officer asked the people to treat the people well. Similar kind of incidents in the similar, uh, similar time, they were asking for my boarding pass. And there is one form which you are supposed to fill in. And that form is kept at one common place where you are supposed to take that form and give it to them. On Mumbai airport or Delhi, I don't remember. Mumbai only because she talked to me in Marathi. How form could they? This is the way people treat to everybody coming from all other countries. The same thing happened when I landed up in Japan airport. She also asked the same thing. But then she told me so modestly as if I thought that she has done some mistake. She said, sir, can I have your pass? I asked her, ma'am, what is the pass? Can you just please take that form? Oh, I'm sorry, you have to go there. As if she is doing some kind of mistake. So that kind of courtesy is required and where it comes from or why it is required because that lady who is working across the counter, she is doing her work skillfully, the work which is allotted to him or her. So if every individual thinks about doing it, I don't think that any, any organization have to think about purposefully plan for quality enhancement. But that is required to be done. So work must be skilled. So Karma Yoga says that whatever work you do, you do it with dedication, with lot of devotion into it and you will land up in Karma Yoga.